Um, so this is question seven in your, in your problem set two. Um, let's see, I see the figure showing um, a person outside the water, someone inside the water, and I guess somewhere in the question you don't describe. And um, I think I need these two numbers noted or I'll at least uh, uh, think about this. This is the index of refraction of glass and this is the index of refraction of water. So with that in mind, uh, this is the question. A uh, scuba diver training in a pool looks at his instructor as shown above. The scuba diver is at a depth of two meters. Oh, yeah, depth of D, two meters. And the uh, ray of light from the instructor is um, to the scuba diver uh, crosses the surface. Oh, so let me just... Uh, Call that, I don't know, X1, a surface of the water at two meters from the instructor's feet. Okay. Um, what angle does the ray from the instructor's face make with the perpendicular, so this is the perpendicular to the water, at the point where the ray enters? Okay. Um, oh, so this is the angle that they are asking us about, theta A. Um, and then they tell us, oh, the angle between the ray in the water and the perpendicular to the water is some number of angle. Um, so let me label this. So theta, um, theta uh, water is equal to, uh, this number might be randomized. If it is, in your question, it will be a different number. Uh, but I'm going to just work with a symbol here, theta w. Okay, and so we are looking for this. That looks like a relatively simple scenario. This looks like just a regular refraction. So we have an incident ray, you have an outgoing ray. You should remember from your reading in the textbook, the Snell's law, which it says, which it says, um, and uh, the index of refraction of a medium times the sign of the angle in that medium is equal to index of refraction in the other, the second transparent medium that the light ray is refracting into times the sign of the angle in that second medium. Uh, there might be different ways this can be written, but this is the form that I prefer because it's kind of easy to chain, especially if you have like multiple parallel uh, boundaries. So that's how I have it memorized. <laughs> so, um, so looking at this, I think we have everything. Uh, we know the index of refraction in air, that's one. We know the index of refraction in water, that's uh, uh, 1.33, or unless problem tells us to use that. We have the index of refraction, or we have the angle in water, that's uh, 25 degrees or theta water. So it comes down to solving for this one unknown. I have one equation, one unknown. I think I'm just gonna solve for it. <laughs> Let me, um, I can't do much of, well, uh, let me do this algebra step by step. So I'm gonna solve for sine of theta one. Um, so uh, solving this for sine of theta one gives me, or um, let me just swap the label to this label here. So sine of, sine of theta A is equal to N2 or um, N water. <laughs> let me write down the correct subscripts and water divide by and for index or refraction in air it's gonna plug in one uh, times sine of uh, theta of water uh, of whose number I have and so the angle in air is um, arc sine of this whole thing and water divide by one times the sine of theta w. Uh, be careful that you are plugging the numbers and um, when you do arc sine, depending on your calculator setting, you might get radians or degrees. The question is looking for a degree sensor. So that's it. Um, so, so for the rest of this question, I'm going to treat this theta a as a known quantity because we solve for it here. So 
it's a numerical value that you would uh, know as you're doing B and C. So uh, it says B, find the height of the instructor's head above the water. So I think it's uh, asking for us this here, uh, this height from his feet to the uh, here, or actually he said above the water. So, okay, I think that actually makes the geometry easier because I don't have to worry about, oh, what is this little thing? Uh, I don't, the way the question is worded, I don't even have to worry about it. So, okay, so let me label that H. Um, I guess I have all the triangle. So this is a right triangle. And I just figured out theta A. And so when I have a geometry like this, I just stare it for a while. And I guess what I'm looking for is, I'm looking for things like a parallel lines. So there's a vertical line here and this vertical line here, they should be parallel, which means this angle is congruent to the, this angle. There's a name for it that I forgot. It's a opposite something. They are congruent. <laughs> That's what I remember from geometry. I don't remember the names, but I know they are congruent. So I can say this is my theta A. So uh, in this triangle, I know the opposite side and I'm trying to find the adjacent side, which means I can use this relationship. Tangent of theta A is equal to the opposite X1 over the adjacent H. Um, you are looking for H. So solve it for H, that's gonna be my answer here. H is equal to X1 divided by tangent of theta A. Good, um, I don't know what you should do with that information, but question asked and that's the answer. And it asks, um, find the apparent depth of the diver's head below water as seen by the instructor. Oh, I guess that's why they drew this figure. Um, so what the question is asking for is this depth here. So they actually gave us uh, the, I don't know, uh, the image. So let me label it with I. The I. They actually gave the actual depth of the diver so from that information, you have to um, find the, the apparent depth of the diver. And I think in this question, we are making a simplification, which may not be always true. Um, at least the way the drawing is drawn, it makes it look like the, the horizontal position of the image is the same as the horizontal position of the diver. I don't know if that's always true, because at least in this drawing, they moved the instructor around. But hey, the, uh, in the drawing, it looks like they're treating these two things as at the same horizontal position. So I'm going to assume that, which means uh, I can do this. Once I, um, once I find the, this distance here, let me call that, um, I don't know, delta X of the diver from the point where the, the light crosses water then um, then I have this triangle here. I kind of looking at it and imagining this triangle here. This right triangle contains the one of the lengths I'm trying to find. And I think this angle is something I know. It's uh, congruent to this angle. And both of these are 90 degree minus the angle theta A, which means, oh, this should be theta A. And oh, and I guess I could have gotten to that from the parallelness of these two uh, vertical lines too. Yeah. Many different ways you can uh, figure out the angle. <laughs> That's one of the actual challenges in teaching geometry that uh, I've never really found a systematic way other than just drawing a bunch of auxiliary figures. Eventually something kind of looks <laughs> meaningful and tells me what I know, what I need to know. So, um, so in this triangle, if I somehow have this uh, delta X, then I have everything I need to find this DI. So my first task will be in finding this uh, horizontal position of the diver. And for that, it looks like I have this triangle. Um, so big, I'm, um, I'm reminded by knowing this uh, depth. So this depth here, I know that. So finish trying to draw this triangle. 
Then it's another right triangle. This theta W angle here, it's the same angle here. So, um, so here I have the adjacent side and I'm looking for the opposite side. So, or uh, let me write it here, tangent of theta W is equal to the opposite delta X over the adjacent D. Solve this for delta X. I have um, then I have the horizontal position. Uh, it's a D tangent theta W. And uh, now use this length uh, in writing out the expression for the height of the depth of the image. So that should be, um, so this theta A, uh, writing out the trigonometric function again, tangent of theta A is the opposite delta X over the adjacent over DI. Um, solve it for DI, then you get, so I'm gonna treat delta X as a known quantity. I can always plug in numbers here to, uh, to actually know the number for delta X. My um, image height or sorry, image depth is the delta X number that I can calculate above divided by tangent of theta A. Oh wow, these two look kind of similar. Oh yeah, I guess the only difference was for the instructor, uh, we already knew the distance it was given. Uh, for, the, uh, for the diver, uh, it, we had to figure out this first. So that's it. I hope this is an, um, uh, I hope this serves as a, a kind of refresher, reminder to a lot of trigonometry and geometry stuff. And that uh, as you refresh and do that, it's not that hard. Just, you know, calculus based. <laughs> You've done harder math questions in your math uh, 3A through 3C.